What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna give you an update on the 120, but I also wanted to share something sweet I got in the mail for the man cave area. It's gonna look awesome over my reef. Uh, this is a painting done by artist Rachel Fogel. You can uh, follow her on Instagram as Reef Weeds. I will leave the information in the description down below. Uh, but as you guys can see here, it's signed by the artist. And this is number four out of 150 prints that she's gonna be selling. And this is known as the Reef Koi Series 1. Beautiful painting is printed on canvas. Now the special thing about mine is that I got mine highlighted with the UV paint. So during the night when my blue lights are on my tank, this is gonna look awesome over the reef and it's gonna glow just like the corals in my tank. Wow guys, take a look at how beautiful the painting looks over the reef. Once the blue lights are on, everything that's highlighted on the painting glows really nice. But yeah guys, go ahead and follow Rachel on her Instagram. She does beautiful artwork. Go ahead and check out her website and you can see all the beautiful artwork uh, that she has up for sale. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the tank. As you guys remember in our previous video, we had started to gut out the tank. We gutted out that middle section, and then I was also planning to start gutting out that left section of the tank. I'll go ahead and show you guys how that went. Let's go ahead and start here by the anemone rock section. This anemone, since I've had it, it's probably split now about five times, and it's still huge. Every time it uh, spits out a baby and it's on the move, I'll grab it and I'll put it here in one of these little glass cups. It makes the process a whole lot easier. Uh, wherever I sell it to, I'll just give the anemone with the little cup. It makes it a lot easier for them to remove it and place it wherever they want. Here's a uh, right hand side boob shot of uh, Acroland. There's Spike, that's my uh, Barbonius Antheus. Comes up in this area thinking that I'm gonna feed the tank. He's a savage. Moving down here to the uh, section that we had gutted out in our previous video. As you can see, everything's looking good. Uh, the PC Rainbow, if you guys remember, the it was RTN in. We went ahead and refragged it, cut up the dead piece, and um, so far it's been doing good. The back we have the uh, blue-green tort. As you can see, it's starting to take off. But yeah, guys, everything in this area, so far so good, everything's growing out. Just gotta keep an eye on it. Of course, I'm probably gonna have to move some pieces around, depending on which acro starts taking off uh, faster. Moving up here to the left-hand section, if you can take a look it looks a lot different a lot emptier in this area I gutted out this whole left hand side as you can see there's a lot of space for the nicer corals to grow out and the fish are loving it too there's a lot more swimming space here in this area now this is a throwback video here to show you guys how it used to look before we gutted out this section it was just pretty much one big blob of coral especially the money caps in the back. You can see they pretty much grew out and just covered up that whole area back there. This is what I was talking to you guys about, how um, corals up here in this section just started pretty much fusing together. It's pretty interesting because as you can see, there's no die off. Um, I think you can credit this to stability. Um, when you don't have any alkalinity swings and everything's stable in the tank, everything is fine and they seem to tolerate them touching each other um, but on the other hand when things are not stable and you have swings uh, instead of fusing I usually would see die off and uh, RTN will come with a vengeance well as you can see guys I'm gonna show you here a little bit of the process of fragging we started out by fragging out all the money cap area there they have pretty much just created a roof over that back area Started removing some of the uh, blue and canada as well. And now to this uh, green acro up here. This guy grew so much, this is the one that was pretty much touching 
corals left and right and everything was just pretty much fused into this coral. Um, I had to break this guy out in pieces. It was really hard to just remove him. Um, I tried moving him and just break him in, breaking it off in one whole piece, but there was just so many corals that stuck to it. As you can see right here, I'm breaking off pieces of the um, blue tip staghorn. You can see there how the money caps had also started to uh, wrap around that coral there. There goes another piece of the uh, blue tip staghorn. Yeah guys, it was a process of a couple of hours trying to just cut out this whole area here. Now here towards the back, I had a really nice uh, staghorn, uh, the ultimate staghorn, which is like a purple staghorn with green tips. And as you can see here, it's uh, pretty much all dead because it wasn't receiving any light back there. That green coral outgrowed and started shading a lot of corals back there. Right now here you're gonna see how I'm gonna try to remove this acro in one whole piece by moving it around. Uh, but of course it's just one big blob of coral. It's fused to a couple of other corals there. On top of that it's already encrusted on the rock. And as you can see here, when I'm trying to pull it out, uh, it's starting to move the rock there on the right hand side bottom. So it was a little bit nerve wracking because I uh, had the potential to just have things start tumbling down and crashing into coral. Uh, but I was able to wiggle it out of there and take out the whole piece. I think that's why it's important to once you're doing your aquascape to also use epoxy in key areas so when you run into things like this um, you're not knocking out your whole aquascape and causing more chaos in the reef but yeah look at the size of this thing came out with a, a piece of the purple money cap as well and look at the huge area that it opened up I still got a frag part of that money cap there in the back that's fused to the back wall now that Millie there is no longer buried let's see if we can bring that back to life I want you guys to keep an eye there on my Walt Disney. As you can see, it's the one to the right that looks kind of like greenish yellow. It's starting to change its color and it's grown a lot. I'm gonna show you how it looks now. There it is, it's finally starting to change into its beautiful color. So I did take you guys' advice and I started taking um, priority on the more unique pieces of coral. So I moved a couple of things around, if you can notice the uh, the purple firefly dragon um, that I had here up front, I've moved it to the left hand side. And I moved up my Walt Disney up here, my Wolverine acro in the back. Take a look also now at the orange passion. A lot more space to grow now. Its colors has also improved. So you can see how different this whole area looks. A lot more emptier now, but it had to uh, get done. Let me go ahead and take you guys here on a quick tour of the LPS Island. Uh, the latest addition added to this LPS rock was the uh, Croc Scully there at the top, the reddish one. You gotta have a Croc Scully in the collection. Another one of my favorites, it's been in the tank for approximately about six months now, is it's this uh, meat coral. Take a look at this guy, how beautiful it is. And it's gotten big. When I first bought it, some of its skeleton was showing. Um, but now look at this guy, he opens up like an umbrella and fills up that corner of the tank there really nice. Here is a left hand side boob shot of the tank. Let's go ahead and move down here by the sand bed area. There goes Mr. Pipefish. I did forget to mention to you guys I got him a partner and it was love at first sight. They're together about 90% of the time. But I'll do a video on that for you guys later. So yeah guys, take a look here down by the sand bed area. It's pretty much no sand in this area. Everything's covered up by encrusting coral. 
and that's kind of the idea to have different types of encrusting corals covering up the um, sand bed area here in the front. An enemy rock area, you can see the uh, rock flowers. The bubblegum monster has recovered. As you can see, it's already started to uh, grow over the sand bed in this area. So I'm just gonna leave that guy there. So yeah guys, the next project would be the right hand side here of the tank. So we already gutted out the center and the left. Now we gotta work on the right hand side. As you can see the slime ball acro here has grown so much that it's covering and shading my Jason Fox limb in the back. It's uh, starting to lose its green tips. Red planet down here. Also, I'm gonna have to frag. Uh, there's a big branch that's growing in towards the back and it's, it's starting to touch the, um, the pink flamingo milli there at the top. As you can see there in the far back corner. Next to it, you can see the uh, pink Cadillac, how much is taken off. If you look at the previous videos, I started out with a, like a one inch knob. And look how much is uh, it's taken off. It's a beautiful acro with uh, blue polyps. But yeah guys, so that would be the next project is to gut out the right hand side of the tank. Um, that slime ball there is killing off my Jason Fox. You can hardly see it anymore. And like I said, it's, uh, it's losing its color. But yes, finally we were able to get this left hand side done. As you can see, it uh, looks a lot emptier. But of course there's a lot more space for the nicer pieces to grow. And the fish also love it because there's a lot more swimming space. Green star polyps, I've been fragging it. If you can see, it grew all the way up here to the front glass. But if you notice the uh, side panel glass, it's almost cleared out because I've been fragging it. So I just have to go ahead and get a couple of frags here out of this front to clean out the, uh, the front of the glass. Quick look here at the uh, frag rack. I think I'm gonna be moving some of these aggro, especially this that pink one there. I'm gonna probably be moving it up into the rock work. See if it starts taking off. These guys down here, as you can see, they start to grow onto the glass. So it should be easy to get some frags out of this one too. And I should be able to just scrape off and break off a frag there. So that's a, a nice thing of having things growing out on the glass. It's a lot easier for you to get frags off. All right, to finish off, just wanna give you guys a top-down view. This is a throwback top-down view to show you guys how my Walt Disney used to look. Now look how it looks now how much it's grown and it changed from that green color to this nice yellow blue and you can start seeing the pinks coming out of it. There is that Milly guys, look, we brought it back to life. Look at those beautiful reds that are starting to come up from that Milly that was buried in between all those corals that was dying. There in the back, you can see the blue staghorn regrowing, orange passion, Really nice coloration. In the back you see the uh, Worldwide Coral Dragon Slayer. Purple dragon there in the front that I moved. Wolverine Acro. And then take a look at the Jason Fox Flame. You can hardly see it anymore. And the green tips are fading. Take a look at the clown guys. He's inside the, the little glass cup. But yeah, a lot more emptier, but a lot more space for all the nicer pieces to grow out. There's the other pipefish. I know I also owe you guys a video on what I'm dosing, how I run my tank. I want to give you guys an update on the sump area. 
Also, I want to do a video on lighting. So I'll try to get those out for you. But again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And as always, keep reefing simple.